Hey everybody, it's Eric from epautos.com, your libertarian car guy, your undiapered car guy. This is a follow-up to the video that I posted earlier um, about setting the float level in a carburetor, uh, and in which I referenced something that might be of interest to you if you're dealing with a particular carburetor, the Rochester Quadrajet, which uh, I use as my demonstrator model for these videos. And that has to do with a trick that I have developed uh, in my wrenching over the years that has to do with something that can be a little bit tricky when dealing with the quadrajet. And I'm having to do this now uh, with, uh, this is where I need a third hand, and this is why this little job is so difficult. What my finger is on right now, if you can see, this is the primary metering rod assembly. And as you can see, it moves up and down in a bore, and there is a spring underneath the, uh, the piston here. And what happens as the carburetor operates is that those rods go up and down. They're actually uh, little, little. Um, they, they go directly into the primary jets. That's how the system works. And so as the thing goes up, the jets are opened and fuel flows and so on. Uh, now here's the difficulty. These little uh, metering rods are extremely delicate and fragile. And when you want to put your carburetor back together after having changed jets, adjusted floats, cleaned it, etc., you have to reinstall the air horn. And the trick is to install the air horn without letting this sucker pop back up. And also, of course, you've also got to do the same with the uh, power piston. That's this, uh, the spring right here, and here's the power piston. And you have to do it very delicately and carefully because if this comes up and you press down on it or damage it while uh, you're trying to reassemble it and you bend those rods, they're not fixable. You have to replace them. And it can be a challenge to find primary reading, metering rods for a specific Rochester Quadrajet carburetor because Rochester made so many of them and each pair is unique to the carburetor that it came with. So do your very level best to not damage it while you're working on it. Now, I'm going to show you my method that I've, uh, that I've come up with to get the air horn back on the carburetor without allowing the primary metering rod to rise out of its bore uh, to keep it in place while I'm reassembling everything. So bear with me while I put this camera down for a moment to set everything up to show you. Okay, we are back. Now, as you can see, I've got a flat blade steak knife, and what I'm doing with this flat blade steak knife is using it, and it's thin, mind you, to keep the primary metering rods seated, and also to keep the accelerator pump uh, piston seated. And now, if I had a third hand, I could pick up the air horn, and I could turn it over, remember about uh, being careful to not damage those brass emulsion tubes, and gently and carefully position it onto the top of the carburetor. Obviously, I haven't got the gasket. There's a gasket that goes in place here, but I'm not having that on for this video just so you can see what I'm doing. And what you do is you gently, carefully seat that air horn on top of the carburetor while maintaining your tension on this knife to keep that thing from seating. If you do it right, it'll pop into place and you'll feel, you'll feel it just pop into place. Uh, there won't be uh, any kind of sense that you have to push down on anything. It should just plop into place. You can see there are some mounting tabs here. The air horn should just fit into place. And then once you've got that air horn positioned, then you can just withdraw your knife blade. And now you have got the carburetor reassembled. And you can begin to attach the screws and all of the little peripheral things that go on to the assembly. Anyway, I hope that this helps. Uh, I wish I'd known this trick years and years ago when I was first uh, learning how to work on the Quadrajet. Uh, it's really an interesting carburetor. Once you understand it, uh, and once um, you know what to do and what not to do. Uh, also, by the way, seating the primary metering rods upon uh, reassembly can be frustrating. The thing goes up and down. In fact, here I'll try and show you a little bit. Go ahead and unseat it. Take out the, the uh, accelerator pump. So watch, I'm going to let it go up now. So now it's up. Now you can see, see it's not seated. You can see the little piston is out of its bore, but it doesn't go directly down. So you have to wiggle it around, wiggle it around a little bit, uh, and sometimes it'll take you several minutes. Be very patient, be very careful, because again, these little needle metering rods, they're very, very delicate. 
you jam down on these things, push down on them, you will break them, uh, even if you bend them a little bit. That's it, you have to get uh, a new set. So don't do that. With carburetors, the key is patience. Don't get frustrated. If you get frustrated, walk away from it, have a cup of coffee, have a beer, do something else for a while, and come back to it when you've got uh, a fresh reservoir of patience. That's probably the best advice that I can give anybody who is starting out to work on these older vehicles with mechanical systems where you actually have to fiddle with it with your fingers uh, rather than just drop in a chip or flash a computer uh, or all the other electronic things that you do with modern cars. So anyway, more up at epautos.com, the web's best libertarian and undiapered car site. Uh, come on down if you'd like more and thanks as always for watching the vids and reading the articles. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. There is a button at the end of each article. Uh, this isn't a sales pitch. I do this for free. If you have something I can help with, uh, just ask me and I'll be happy to, uh, to do my best to respond. Uh, so again, thanks and we'll catch up with you again soon.